Non, il s'est élevé pourtant et impatient à l'héros d'un pétion tout droit. Et wham Mais le vin de l'eau pour la me le ruiner, le ruiner, le maguiner. Il y a plus en donné au Phil and John. Tops to the sunny streets, different drummers playing different kind of beats. It's like a mystery, never ends. I see you crying, and I want to be your friend. Hear your footsteps in the street, won't be long before we meet. It's obvious, just call me in and call. Waiting for the shout Oblivious That moment she's okay so No one really cares Got different badges But you wear them just the same It's like a funny film It's kind of cute You got the bullets But there's no one left to shoot Hey, footsteps in the street Won't be long before we meet It's obvious Just call me in and call me out I'll be waiting for the shout Oblivious Steps in the street won't be long before we meet. It's obvious. Just call me in and call me out. I'll be waiting for the shout. Cheers. <laughs> Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, Phil and myself are both professional musicians. Yo. And we spend a lot of time at home because we don't get many concerts like this, do we, Phil? No. And normally what happens is um, we sat by the telephone waiting for it to ring. If we had a telephone. <laughs> to get work, and what we have to do to make ends meet, we go into the place where we live, which is a town called Derby, and we start to play for money on the streets, and for some reason, the next song we're going to sing, it usually brings in the most money, so we normally sing it every other song. <laughs> and tonight's no exception. <laughs> so if you want to give some money, we don't mind at all, do we, Phil? It'd be very nice. It would be. There's just one little condition. The guitars are fairly expensive, so if you're going to throw anything, can you make it notes instead of coins? <laughs> if you know the song, please join in. And if you don't... Take your shoes off and hum.
Widen of the railway station, I was running scared. Laying low, seeking out the poor quarters where the ragged people go, looking for the places only they would know. La la la, la 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 la. Stands a boxer, a fighter by his trade, and he carries a reminder of every glove that laid him down or cut him till he cried out in his anger and his shame. I am leaving, I am leaving, but the fighter still remains. La la la, la 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 la. To close, wishing I was gone, going home. Where the New York City winters are not bleeding me. years ago Phil and myself got invited to go to Australia to do some concerts and we'd never been abroad before apart from Wales <laughs> and it was going to be like a little three week tour and it was going to be free you see free food, free holiday and coming from Derby as we do you don't turn many things like that down so we said yes and on the day of departure all our families went to see us off at the airport 300 of them how many? Ish. <laughs> How many? Six. <laughs> and they're all your family. <laughs> and you know why, don't you? I didn't tell my mum I was going. <laughs> <laughs> she sent me to the shop for a bottle of milk and I went to Australia. <laughs> We was really nervous and we wanted to look really cool when we walked on the plane and we had the guitars in one hand and we boarded the plane going like this. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> and you start to work out what everything does around you, don't you? And eventually we took off and that was tame, wasn't it, Phil? Tame. And we was really looking forward to our first trip abroad. One of the other reasons we wanted to go, I don't know if you remember, in Neighbours a couple of years ago... Des and Daphne were having a few problems. Um, they're not so much these days, but they were then. <laughs> and... <laughs> Is somebody going down out there? <laughs> <laughs> because hunky Shane was in the way, Shane Ramsey. And Phil and myself, we've done quite a few counselling courses, you see. <laughs> And we thought, wouldn't it be a good idea if we can get alongside Des and Daphne and try and help their situation out a little bit? So that was an added bonus about going to Australia. About an hour, hour and a half into the flight, people get getting up, getting some food and drinks and sitting back down again. And because we'd never flown before, we'd only got traveller's checks, we thought, oh no, it's 39 hours to Australia. Be a bit peckish. We would be. <laughs> and eventually, after about 15 or 16 hours, we landed at a place called Karachi Airport, and while we were sat on the runway, the stewardess came to us and said, You better move, we should get run over. <laughs> she said, The food is free, you know. 
So as soon as we took off again, we grabbed four or five of these meat omelettes and we really started to... Big ourselves. We did. Um, a couple of hours after that, we began to feel quite ill and we both got food poisoning, but Phil had got the runs as well. <laughs> which is quite funny on a plane. 400 passengers and four toilets and I had one all the way there. And eventually, after 39 hours... We landed at Sydney Airport and we staggered off the plane and we staggered into customs. Then I collapsed. <laughs> and then I died. <laughs> but I got better. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I was just trying to draw attention to myself, I'm sorry. If you're going to say anything, make it constructive. <laughs> so we made our way towards a hotel room where we were staying. Meccano. And... <laughs> And we got into the room. Stickle bricks. <laughs> and I flopped onto the bed. I flipped. <laughs> so we flip flopped onto the beds. And we started to watch all the TV programmes. <coughs> and eventually, um, after a few of the soaps, neighbours came on. And things, things had really changed because we didn't know it then, but it's like two and a half years ahead of what it is in England. And you know what happens to Daphne, tragically. Um, but Des does get married again. We can't tell you who to, but he does get married. It begins with J. <laughs> and ends in E. And sounds like plane. <laughs> but some strange things happen to Mrs Mangle over the next few months. She becomes a professional footballer. <laughs> can you remember Clive, the doctor? Well, he comes back into it in a fairly big way. He's Prime Minister next time. <laughs> and Kylie Minogue, I mean, over in England she's a bit of a celebrity, but over in Australia they treat her like royalty. It's amazing. Sounds like a European football team, doesn't it, Kylie Minogue? <laughs> Bayern Munich 3, Kyle Minogue nil. <laughs> so we made our way towards the, um, the concert hall where we was playing, which was at Sydney University. And the guy said, oh, by the way, it's the 60s, nostalgia evening. Can you do a song from the 60s, you see? So we said, yeah. And we got the guitars out to learn one. And one of them had been broken during the flight about where the neck is. Now to a musician... That's like everything. Um, to us, it's nothing. But <laughs> So we quickly had to borrow a guitar and quickly learn a song as well. And we thought this one was most appropriate because we were missing home. You know, being away for the first time, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. My bottle of milk had gone sour. <laughs> and Neighbours wasn't, you know, all that we thought it was going to be. So we'd like to do this song. Andy, I don't know if it's possible. Can I have a little bit more of my guitar? <coughs> and could you turn Phil off? <laughs> Not to worry. <laughs> Blessed are the meek. <laughs> if that's okay with everybody. <laughs>
I'm sitting in a railway station Got a ticket for my destination This is a song about a young guy who becomes a Christian and just some of the problems and hassles he finds once he starts going to church. You'd think Christ would have said, by their suits, you shall know them. go they cancel the rock and roll show and we had nothing else to do well me mates they walked out but it was something you was talking about and I didn't even see them go I went home and told me dad <laughs> He laughed and said, that's all right lad It's a phase we all go through, you'll see But I went upstairs and cried Strangest tears of my life All my wasted years I felt so free Child of my 
Says I ought to search for a lively nearby church. There was one it always recommend. So the next day I took a ride. I walked around and around outside till I summoned the courage to go in. Couldn't understand this steering. Was it something I was wearing? Sorry, I didn't mean to offend. Either they sidled by, or braced themselves and put on a smile. Tried too hard to be my friend. Stein face. He asked me if I'd come to the right place. His voice rose and fell, just like the tide. And his brass buttons glowed, just like the landing lights at Heathrow. As he talked about his church <laughs> with burning pride. The time I got outside, I just wanted to run and hide and join my mates down at the birds and bees. Now I'm walking the streets alone, kicking life out of lifeless stones, caught between the devil and the sea, Harvey. I'd like to do a song now, and it's by one of our favourite artists of all time, a gentleman called Jason Donovan. <laughs> That's one thing about television that really bugs me, all these soap opera stars making records. I think, I speak on behalf of the people of Yorkshire, <laughs> it's about time Amos Brearley from Emmerdale Farm did one. <laughs> I should be so lucky, 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 Mr. Wilkes, I should. Oh 
Thank you. When I was quite a lot younger, I used to spend a lot of time at my grandma and my granddad's house because my mum used to go to work every day and she used to drop us off on the way there. And I don't know about you, but my grandma is one of those kind of people who always knows best. <laughs> and she used to really criticise the way my mum brought me and my sister up. Mind you, to be fair, she had a point because I'm not sure, but I think I was the only kid on our street who had nappy rash on his head. <laughs> and my mum wasn't very good at cooking either. She made us a rhubarb pie once. It was two foot long and an inch wide. <laughs> and apart from nagging at my mum all the time, my grandma used to nag at my granddad, so what I used to do, just to get out of the way for two or three hours, he'd take my dad and they'd go fishing on this lake near where we used to live. Now, one Sunday afternoon, they're out fishing, and my granddad was looking over the side of the boat for some shoals of fish, and his false teeth fell out, <laughs> and they landed in the bottom of this lake in all this mud and everything, and my granddad was really fed up because it was his only day of pleasure all week, and he lost his choppers. So I sat in this boat for about two hours sulking and he didn't say one word to my dad. And after about two hours, they got the sandwiches out. <laughs> my dad ate his, and my granddad kind of sucked on his a bit. <laughs> and after about three hours, I still not said anything at all to my dad. So what my dad thought he would do was play a practical joke on my granddad. Now when my dad was eight, he had a crash on his go-kart so he used to have to wear false teeth too. So when my granddad wasn't looking, he took his own false teeth out, tied them onto a fishing line, lowered them down over the side of the boat, and carried on like nothing had happened. And after about ten minutes, he goes, Granddad, I think I've got a bite. <laughs> so my granddad says, well, pull it in, Dad, let's have a look. So my dad pulls his fishing line in, and on the end of these false teeth. And he turns around to my granddad. He says, Granddad, I think I've just caught your false teeth. Well, my granddad's face lit up and he says, Pass them here then, lad, let's put them back in. So my dad took these teeth off the fishing line, passed them to my granddad, and my granddad went. <coughs> no, they aren't mine. <laughs> um, that's it. I've finished. So that's my story.
so you've wasted six minutes <laughs> on that. More or less. Anything to say for yourself? Sorry. <laughs> Do you think sorry is good enough? I'd like to make a public apology. <laughs> because you've paid a lot of money for your tickets tonight. <laughs> and I've spoiled it for everybody and I'm sorry. Phil, can I be frank with you? <laughs> Your name's John. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. I might turn into salt. <laughs> Why do you have to ruin everything we do? Because we've planned it all before we come on. <laughs> You said to me, look an idiot for two hours and I'll make you rich. <laughs> you promised. You've kept your half of the bargain, haven't you? <laughs> well, what I suggest you do is go and stand over there near your keyboards and think about being cool okay. or you're out the band. <laughs> the, the choice is yours. Would you still be called Phil and John? <laughs> Or just John. <laughs> John. John. What a stupid name for a band. <laughs> song we'd like to do, we wrote it a few months ago, and it's really just trying to tattle the... Un oh, that's a big sneeze. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> It's not very funny. <laughs> I love the theatre. <laughs> song we'd like to do, we wrote it a few months ago, and it's really just trying to tattle the unemployment situation. You know, people keep saying the jobless total is falling. Um, I don't doubt that, but it's not falling very fast where we live, and I wish somebody could do something about it. And no, I'm not blaming this government, because I don't think any government's really got the answers. The song's called The Day the North Left Town. <laughs> Newspapers filled with southern smiles when millions in their heroic books and new names on their files. Some handshake deal to close the factories down. So sad to day for. See? 
This is a song about a tortoise Phil used to have when he was a baby boy called Tommy. I actually had this tortoise when I was three years old. And before then, I'd never actually seen a tortoise before. And my mum and dad came in on my third birthday with this parcel. And I opened it up, and inside was what I thought was a brick. (laughs) And I thought, well, that's a bit of a useless birthday present, because you can't kick it around the garden or anything, you know. But I thought I'd have a a bit of a closer look at this brick. So I took it out of the parcel. And all of a sudden, these four legs shot out. This leathery head. It jumped out of my hand, onto the carpet, ran over the carpet, did a poo on the carpet. (laughs) And its legs and its head went back in again. And I thought, my mum's never going to believe this. You get some really stupid presents when you're kids, don't you? Can you remember idiot mittens? You get like two gloves with a piece of elastic down the back. You'd wave to your friend and hit yourself in the face at the same time. I'll tell you another thing we used to do when we were kids as well. Every Christmas, we used to get quality street wrappers, take the silver foil bit off, and look through the transparent bit at black and white telly. (laughs) We watched Sound of Music in blue one Christmas. It was really good. Have you finished? You ready? Tom of the Tortoise. Known to his friends as Tom. Once was a tortoise called Tommy Who was so incredibly shy He was ugly as well So he stayed in his shell And all day he'd sit there and cry And eat lettuce His owners, they built an extension On the side of the house by the door Well, the builder was thick, mistook Tom for a brick and plastered his shell to the wall. (laughs) Well, this was okay for the autumn Cos Tommy made no noise at all Till springtime came round, young Tommy was found When out popped his head from the wall Paper They covered his head with a lampshade But he chewed the tassels all night They got sick of him, put a dimmer switch in And wired him up as a light (laughs) He went round with a gang of punk hedgehogs With a hairbrush strapped onto his back But the rest of the gang all had girlfriends And Tommy hadn't quite got the knack of chatting them up He fancied this tortoise called Ethel Rumour had it she liked him as well All night he would cry, tired of being shy It was time to come out of his shell Day he finally made it. One day he finally made it. On a visit to see Ethel, his date, having decided to go, his progress was slow, took him two years to crawl to the gate. <laughs> Knocked down by a Ford Cortina 
Ethel saw it and she cried and cried. They scraped Tommy up from the side of the road. And two days later, he died. Now Tommy is no longer with us He's gone to that garden on high They call him Tommy Cause he made a rather lovely tortoise pie Phil and myself first became Christians, we belong to a young people's fellowship of about 200 people. And it's very easy to be a Christian in those kind of circumstances because your faith is not really tested. We were trying to work out the other month how many of those people are still going to church on a regular basis. And there's probably only 30 to 40 of them. And I wish more people could realize when they become Christians, it's for life. You know, you ask God to become King of Kings and Lord of Lords in your heart and to take over and become the boss. And this is a song, really, and it's a prayer to God that one day he'll stir in their hearts, those people, a desire to get right with him. It's called Echoes to Return. like to do one more song before we finish. Thanks very much for having us. We've had a very nice time, haven't we, Phil? You've been very kind. You have been. <laughs> I'd like to move here. <laughs> Was that sincere enough? <laughs> it's been the best night of my life. <laughs> the song's called What Kind of Love. Bit of a country and western song, really, haven't I? <laughs> Got me cotton picking banjo. Uh, <laughs> what kind of love is this that gives itself? Of love is this? A love 
Yeah. 